The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us for our monthly webinar here at Vision New England. Very excited today about our topic and to have you with us uh, as we uh, talk about the Alpha course, which is, uh, I'm really excited for you to hear about how this course has been used all over the world, and in particular, right here in New England when it comes to churches sharing the gospel, sharing the hope of Christ with their communities. So we've got some great guests today who are going to be uh, leading us and sharing with us. And uh, just to begin, I want to introduce myself. My name is Ryan Howell, and I'm the president here at Vision New England. And I began that role in October of last year, and it's been a great few months just trying to get my feet underneath me and figure out what's happening and what we're doing. And Alpha is actually a part of Vision New England, so it's been awesome to get to know the crew of Alpha and what they're doing here in New England, uh, which is really some phenomenal stuff. And so today to lead our webinar um, is Dick Kiernan. And Dick is the Alpha Field Ministry Director, and he has been with Alpha for 11 years now and uh, oversees all of the field work that takes place throughout the region, and he'll share more about that. Dick, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Great to be on. <laughs> yeah, Dick, where in New England are you right now? I'm in Bedford, New Hampshire, in my office. Okay, so you're in Bedford, New Hampshire. I'm in Sanford, Maine, and I think we can get one other state here involved in just a second because you have a guest with you today, uh, Pastor Richard Rhodes, who is one of the pastors at Grace Chapel, who pastors and oversees outreach and new campus development. Uh, Richard, are you there? How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm in Bedford, Massachusetts on my deck. Oh, see, and we're all jealous of that because I am Sorry. not. I am inside. <laughs> I don't even have a window in this room. So. <laughs> but so, uh, so we've got Bedford, Massachusetts, and Bedford, New Hampshire represented in Sanford, Maine today. So that's awesome. And hopefully we've got people from all over the region on the call either today live or who will listen to this uh, over the next couple of months as well. So uh, today our topic is introducing Alpha, which is an opportunity to explore the meaning of life. And Dick's going to talk more about that. But before we jump into that, just a couple of logistics so everybody understands. We want this to be as interactive as possible. And so you'll see that there is a way for you to interact with us by asking questions. And there's a couple of ways that you can ask questions. One is by clicking the little hand icon and that will raise your hand and I'll be able to see any hand that's raised up and at an appropriate time I'll be able to just pause and we'll turn your microphone on if you have a microphone we'll unmute you and we'll be able to hear your question hopefully um, if that doesn't work or if you want to ask it another way there's a questions box that all you have to do is type in your question and we'll look at it and I'll ask the question for you and so we're gonna do our best we've had pretty good luck with the technology to be able to um, get questions answered and, and go back and forth. But every now and then we have some issues. So we wanna, we'll do our very best with that. So absolutely. Well, Dick, at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to you and to uh, Richard and help us understand what exactly is Alpha? How is it being used in the region? How do we get started in our churches, in our homes, whatever that might be? So thank you so much for being with us today, Dick, and it is all yours. Thanks so much, Ryan, and we're really glad to do this. Uh, what we're actually doing today, we also call a Taste of Alpha. Um, and that's where we go to a church and we a answer the basic question of what is Alpha, why does Alpha work, how do you get Alpha started, and we allow people to ask as many questions as they'd like to ask. So what we're doing in this, uh, in this introductory session is just what we do in churches anywhere around New England that we're invited to go. Sometimes we have what we call Alpha Advisors do that. So we're so glad to be able to get the word out about what is Alpha. So um, I have a little um, PowerPoint here that Ryan's going to be clicking and so we're going to take a look at what is Alpha, which would be the next screen. And um, so uh, it is a 10-week course and it has a weekend away in the middle of it. We don't say retreat because that may be uh, intimidating to some people, so we just say a weekend away, and that gives you an idea that everything about Alpha is meant to try to make people comfortable. And so everything about our language and what we try to do is non-threatening. The talks focus <clears throat> on the essentials of the Christian faith and what all Christians have in common. Uh, so whatever 
church or denominational background, if you're Trinitarian in the Christian stream, you'll find that this covers the beliefs that, that are common among the denominations. Every Alpha has a dinner and a DVD in 95% of the cases. Reverend Nick and Gumbel is presented by, on, by DVD, but in about 5% of the cases, people do live talks. Uh, and after those talks are a small group discussion. And so the point of Alpha is to bring the gospel everywhere. And so it is most often done in churches, but Alpha can be run in any environment, and we adapt it to any environment we can possibly think of. Many times it's run in homes. It can be run in restaurants. I uh, even we know of people who've run it in bars, and uh, so any environment. And we have something called Alpha Specialties, and Alpha Specialties where you reach a particular group in a particular setting, such as uh, Alpha for Youth. And we're really excited. Uh, I'll take a note on this for a minute. Um, Alpha for Youth had always been dependent on a live speaker. The kids really wouldn't go for watching a DVD, and so Alpha for Youth was always a live speaker. I've done it a number of times, and we've had wonderful results. Well, recently, our friends in Canada produced a full-length Alpha course for youth that is absolutely outstanding. So I really encourage you, uh, if you check out Alpha, you would find on the Alpha USA website a link to uh, the Alpha for Youth that is just um, we're really excited and think that we have a, a tool that will really make a big difference. But going on, Campus Alpha, uh, is, is uh, we've had a lot of experience running Alpha, especially among a number of Boston campuses. Alpha in prison, we always have the joke that there's no weekend away on an Alpha in prison. <laughs> uh, Connecticut, Connecticut has had, uh, in 10 out of 18 prisons, have, they have run Alpha there for years. Uh, two main ministries have been doing that, but it's run in many places around New England. Alpha in the marketplace, I don't know as many experiences of that, but it's done over the lunch hour. And the short Alpha course called <coughs> Alpha Express, there's a 25-minute course. Um, so it's adapted to the marketplace. Alpha ESOL, and the most experienced church in this is Grace Chaplin. So I'm sure Richard's going to tell us a little mm -hmm. more about that, but Lisa Olerich has really pioneered this, and she's also the national director of it, besides being on our New England staff. And so many times we've heard wonderful stories about Chinese medical students or doctors, uh, but it really anybody who wants to learn English and do Alpha while they're learning English. Um, alpha in the military, we've had a little bit of that happening in New England, but the point is that these are all specialties where we're bringing the Alpha experience into any environment. And then we have a, a complementary course or series of courses called Relationship Central. And, and a, if you came up, we were on the webinar last month, you would have heard Ryan talking about uh, opportunities to meet felt needs of the people in your community. So Relationship Central offers um, a number of those. One would be the marriage course. <coughs> Not only would this be for people in your church, but for people you're trying to reach. Uh, the marriage prep course. Uh, so the marriage course is an eight-week course. The marriage prep course is a five-week course. Parenting teens and parenting children are both five-week courses. And all of these, people can come to your church, connect with you, and you offer something that they really need. And through that relationship, many times we invite people to Alpha. So those would be this real description of what is Alpha or re, uh, some of the resources related to Alpha. And um, one thing more about what is Alpha will be the next slide, which will be uh, an overview of the talks. Alpha always is uh, meant to be non-threatening, and you always start off with no heavy obligations at all. So we begin by inviting people to an introductory evening where they just watch uh, they have a dinner together, or watch a video, and then people tell about how they went on Alpha and what impact it had on them. So the talk is, is Christianity untrue, irrelevant, and boring? So you just invite people to a dinner and a talk. And if they like it, you invite them to the course. And um, so there's a 10-week <coughs> course, and you see there, who is Jesus? Why did Jesus die? How can I be sure of my faith? Those three talks are all about the basics of the gospel. The next talks are about um, starting to live the Christian life. How do I pray? How do I read the Bible? How does God guide us? And then the red 
indicates the weekend away talks. Who is the Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit do? How can I be filled with the Holy Spirit? How can I make the most of the rest of my life? And so you can see by that, it not only do you have an experience, a prayerful weekend, where most of the time that's where people come to conversion, but also you're beginning to introduce the mission. What is God calling me to do? What do I do with the rest of my life? So following that weekend, the final talks of the Alpha Course really get them grounded further and begin to go into the mission. How can I overcome evil, which is what new believers need to know? How can I tell others? You see it's directly to the mission. Does God still heal today? And finally, what about the church, which is really essential because the point of an Alpha Course is to, to uh, be hand-in-hand -hand with the local church and building up the local church. And so um, those are the talks of Alpha. I want to tell you about the just how Alpha got going. And uh, before I turn it over to Richard, well, he'll tell his experience in his church. But Alpha from 1976 to 1990 was an, a, a course for new members at Holy Trinity Church in London. And uh, so it was mostly home-based. And um, when the Reverend Nicky Gumbel took it over in 1990, he said, I don't want to just do it for new members. I want to reach the college kids in the backyard here. And so he changed everything about Alpha to be oriented towards reaching people outside the church. And so in every way, um, it, it began to be something that would encourage people to come in, ask their questions, make them comfortable, uh, have a meal together. So that's how everything in Alpha changed. <clears throat> and now because the faith has been steeply declining in Europe, um, and Alpha began to attract all these young people. It became, you know, a really popular thing, and all kinds of people wanted to start to do this course. And so it started spreading all over England. So in 1993, they held their first conference on how to run the Alpha course, so it could be spread to other places. And of course, London is a very cosmopolitan city. It started spreading around the world. It first started coming to the United States in the mid 90s. People who had been in London started bringing it back. And in 1997, the first U.S. conference was held in New York City at St. Bartholomew's in Manhattan. And in our case, in the late 90s, uh, there was a woman named Rebecca Gyra who was on our board for years. She had done the first Alpha with Nikki Gumbel in 1990, and she was been on our board for all this time. We started to have some trainings with Nikki Gumbel in the late 90s in Framingham. And in 2001, a team was formed, and we held our New England Conference at Gordon College where there were 1,500 people who attended. And I think this is a good place to uh, turn it over to Richard and say, Richard, tell us your story because I think it started in 2001 at it, Gordon, Gordon College. Yeah, it absolutely did, uh, although I'd probably have to go back two years with the true confession because for two years I had been hearing about Alpha but resisted it. Um, mainly because I felt like we were going to kind of be boxed into something and I I just uh, didn't really take the time to look more closely but when the conference came up uh, at Gordon College uh, I felt the Lord was saying take a group of folks and seek whether or not I, I want you to do this and within a, like a one week period of time I had like six people uh, tell me about this Alpha uh, conference so anyway we Reluctantly, we all went and and felt uh, the humility of Nikki Gumbel and felt the, the the that this would be a, a very powerful tool to help uh, people be introduced to Christ. So we started in 2001 doing uh, Alpha, uh, and we've been doing it ever since. It's changed forms in some ways over the years. Uh, we've we've adjusted to different things, but uh, it by far has been the most effective tool to help introduce people to, to Christ. Uh, one thing I love now is looking around the congregation on a Sunday morning and, and remembering you know, this person and when they came to faith and this person and this person. Um, uh, and it really, uh, the majority of folks that are coming to faith are coming uh, th through Alpha. So we started then, and we had that team of 10, 10 folks, and they were our table leaders, and we just uh, really brought it 
pretty widely known, uh, promoted it pretty uh, widely within within the church, and and people responded by bringing their friends. So that's uh, how we got how we got started, and uh, you know, these days we have tried uh, doing doing it in various venues. We've tried with small groups. We've um, done this, a Sunday morning kind of one hour. Uh, the the Alpha Express. Um, we've gone out to groups within the church, like our young adults group has done Alpha. Right now, we're doing uh, the Alpha for Youth that Dick described uh, with our high school group. So we've tried it in a lot of different venues, and I think because of the branding, uh, i.e., I just the awareness that people have within our church that if you have a friend that you want to introduce to Christ and you're having a difficult time doing that you bring them to Alpha um, or if you have a friend who's asking you questions that you're struggling answering you come with them to Alpha and so Alpha has um, become very well known within within the church very good and so Richard um, in 2001 um, well how many people have been through Alpha at as Grace Chapel and and how has your church changed since uh, since doing Alpha in 2001? Well, I uh, I I stopped counting after after a while because it's been 13 years. But um, my best estimate is we've had about 2,500 people um, go go through go through Alpha, and um, and I, I I do believe it is the most uh, effective um, tool for sharing the gospel and helping people come to know faith. The, there was one thing that I did not anticipate that is a, a great uh, French benefit and that is I also think this tool called Alpha is the best evangelism training tool. Uh, for years I taught all kinds of evangelism classes. I would keep naming them different things: friendship evangelism, everyday evangelism, uh, lifestyle evangelism, and it it was, I guess, partially effective. I mean, people went home with notes in a notebook, and people were sh sharing their faith. But but um, Alpha has actually been such a an effective tool to to teach evangelism because it, when people bring a friend and they watch them over uh, you know eight ten weeks ask questions and come to faith they really enter into the process of evangelism and so it becomes real to them uh, and and that just fires them up so I I think Alpha has been the most effective evangelism training tool that we've had as well yes very good very good. So your church has grown a great deal during this time, and I what I remember about your church is you have so many follow-ups coming after Alpha that you didn't you recognize Alpha as the beginning and it's a real compelling preaching of the gospel. But your church has life communities. Your church has mm -hmm. a developed a number of discipleship courses. So you, I think I believe you consider Alpha the beginning, and you have these other things going on, and and eventually, like you said when you come back on the team you start to equip your church actually it's like a laboratory for evangelism training where if you come in on your alpha team you learn how to do it you become comfortable talking about your faith with other people uh, yes I, I think so I the the people that I we've gathered around us to do alpha tend to have real strong hearts to see people come to faith and oftentimes those of us that have those hearts have to work harder at the follow-up and making sure people make connections yeah, yeah, so yeah. so we we did not do a very good job of that in the beginning but we have have really concentrated on that to tr to provide um, uh, great follow-up steps afterwards so there's a course that uh, one of our pastors pastor Doug Whalen has adopted from a church in Nairobi called plug-in which is like a beta if you will it's a follow-up to alpha and so we encourage people to go straight into to, to alpha I mean to, to plug-in and then into a life community so that follow-up step is important um, 
we used to have alpha off-site and because we felt like uh, seekers or unchurched folks would be less reluctant to come to this thing called alpha if it was not in the church but then we found that people were having a very hard time once they came to faith making a transition to a building they'd never been to um, and and so after a few years we moved it back into uh, the church building and which didn't seem to keep people away uh, as much as we thought and also made it very easy to say hey uh, walk with me over here, you know, and let me just show you this church is, you know, where we meet for, you know, uh, for our worship, and it just made the transition a lot easier. Very good. Follow up easier. And I don't know if you're being a little shy, Richard, but your church has grown a great deal since 2001, and you have two other churches that have been planted from Grace. Do you mind saying a little about that? Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I. We have grown, and I think just about everybody would say that the reason we've grown is because people have come to faith in Alpha, and um, because that's when we do we do a lot of faith stories in the worship services and and, and baptisms, and almost every one of them talks about Alpha in some some regard. So uh, it had that part's been effective. And one of the things we realized about three or four years ago was that we were landlocked like so many churches are, and we were also um, more of a regional church, meaning people were driving a ways to get here, and we didn't think that was a, a badge of honor at all. We felt like that was actually detrimental to the expansion of the kingdom, that, that God really wanted a thousand lights on a thousand hills, a lot of strong churches, and local churches in, in, in every community, strong, vibrant churches. So we began uh, three years ago to kind of spread out and form campuses and where people lived. And so uh, we started one in Wilmington three years ago with a number of folks that live in Wilmington and Reading and, and this past fall in Watertown, a church just blessed us. There were 20 people left and they they uh, didn't want it to turn into condos, so they sold it to us for a dollar. And and now we're uh, trying to form a, a, a third campus. But the, the thing about spreading out like that is it makes doing – we now we have alpha courses on each of those campuses. That's just one of the central core things that we do wherever we're located. Very good. Well, um, uh Ryan, if you could bring up that slide on what has been the impact of Alpha around the world, I want to say a little bit about that and then tell you a little bit more about some of the other churches of New England. So um, since 1990, Alpha has spread around the world. It's been transferred, translated into 74 languages, and uh, 23 million people have taken the Alpha course. And uh, they, I just heard the other day it was 24 million people. I haven't changed the slide yet, but it, it's always you have to keep up with the numbers. Uh, but in our own in our own New England, since 1997, more than 80,000 New Englanders have completed the Alpha course from more than 800 churches from all kinds of denominations. And my when I started working with Alpha in 2003, I was going around in New England and finding about the stories of what was happening and how it was impacting New England. And um, in our um, uh, in our own New Hampshire, I took a period of time in 2005, and I uh, every time someone told me there was an Alpha Church, I called and I found out about the church, and I asked them if they knew of other Alpha churches. And so after I did a little research, I found 105 churches in New Hampshire alone have been doing Alpha and more since 2005. But so we we are really excited about the impact that Alpha has had, and. Um, as as Richard pointed out, it brings non-believers to faith, but it also renews many churches, uh, people <clears throat> of many churches, uh, and and as Richard said also, it it begins to train your church to be effective in outreach, to talk to outsiders, and to do it in a way that's that's respectful and engaging. And um, so uh, we've had a wonderful impact of Alpha around the world. We're going to say a little bit more why we think that is in a minute, but I want to go to the next slide and talk about uh, the point of the impact it's had in New England. You'll see that on this slide there are 11 churches listed. You see the Grace Chapels listed there at the top. 
Uh, but there are churches you'll see that if you scan through, you'll see there are churches in all six New England states listed here. And if you look a little bit at it, you'll see that the different churches, you will find various, you know, evangelical, Baptist, a charismatic, Anglican, um, a covenant church, evangelical covenant church, Catholic church, um, congregational church. You see Assemblies of God. There are all different kinds of churches have run Alpha all over New England. And, and some of them, you'll see that they're more suburban settings. Others are more rural settings. For example, in the lower right, Zion Episcopal began doing Alpha in the all over southern Vermont. Uh, there were so many communities that began doing Alpha through Zion Episcopal. And uh, so that's a very rural area of Vermont. And many times they they did their Alpha weekends together uh, because they had smaller groups but in several churches. Another very rural setting is First Baptist in Pittsfield, Maine. And since 1997, they have had so many alphas, and they have planted so many churches up there. It's really made a big difference. So I just want you to see that Alpha has done very well all over New England in a whole variety of churches. And so we're really excited about the um, unity that that also builds. And, and when I remember when I, I was at that same conference <clears throat> that Richard attended it with his church in 2001, mm -hmm. that was my first experience of Alpha as well. And I remember that it was one of the most striking things about it was that these 1,500 mm -hmm. people were from all different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I had been working in, in, uh, for some time in outreach, and, and when I was there at that setting, I found people from charismatic backgrounds, mm -hmm. evangelical backgrounds, mainline backgrounds, and Catholic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I would say about maybe you know, in equal numbers, and so it was really phenomenal that mm -hmm. this this thing has worked across the denomination. Is really, not, it's not the main purpose of Alpha by any means, but it's building church unity across the denominations, which which we think is really essential for you know revival and awakening to come to New England is for the churches to be mm -hmm. working together. So that has been an unintended impact of Alpha mm -hmm. that has just been wonderful. I don't know if you want to say something about that, Richard. Well, I, that struck me at that conference as well because you, you were standing next worshiping with nuns and priests and people from all different backgrounds, and it, it was packed. I remember Gordon College, that, that, uh, that venue was completely packed, 1,500, and you just felt that God was really do it, doing something pretty special. And it has been a blessing for me for all these years to work with so many different kind of churches. Mm -hmm. Well, Richard, one of the things we want to do as we continue on in our, our introductory questions here, or the basic questions about Alpha, is why do we think that Alpha has been so effective uh, in general, and why in New England? What, what would you say about that question? Why is Alpha working? <clears throat> well, I, I would say if I had to list one characteristic of unchurched folks in New England, I would use the word suspicious. Uh, my neighbors, people I'm, you know, coaching with uh, in town, I just feel like they're very suspicious of organized religion. And I think, but they're curious too. So I think so many of them have had some kind of nominal uh, church background as a kid and they they abandoned it uh, for what they think was good cause but now a lot of my friends are you know having kids and their kids are asking questions and they don't know how to answer them um, and so if they trust the inviter and the inviter says hey we have a place where anybody can ask any question they want without fear of judgment that's what a lot of people are suspicious about, being judged. And we call it Alpha. And I'd love for you to go with me just one night. and Just try it out. If you don't like it, you don't have to go back. Nobody's going to harass you. And so we make a big deal about just inviting people to go one night. And we literally have people that have been bribed to come, kick others. <laughs> come kicking and screaming. I mean, my one of my favorite stories was this one guy that had been after his friend to come to Alpha because his life was falling apart and he was reluctant, reluctant. He didn't want to do have anything to do with a bunch of smiling Christians. And his friend said to him, well, if I um, 
uh, the, 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 the one who is not a Christian said, okay, I'll go with you to Alpha if you'll go jump in the ocean with me. And it was the middle of February. The next morning, the friend showed up at his door in a swimsuit and <laughs> said, I'm ready to go. And so he, they went and jumped in the ocean, and that week he came to Alpha. And he has come to faith, and now the gal he was living with, she has come to faith, and their children have come to faith, and they're like the core leadership of the Watertown campus. And uh, it's just a, a, a beautiful story. But people come very... Uh, often they come very reluctantly, but I think because they experience what they don't experience in the in the rest of the world, and that is a non-judgmental zone uh, where they can ask any question and they really aren't judged for it. Uh, that kind of environment is very very attractive. I think a lot of people long to have an opportunity to talk about the meaning of life, their purpose, God, faith, Jesus. They just don't have an environment to, to, to talk, and Alpha really provides that. Uh, I'm, we're going to come back to this, but um, one of the ways that this happens is that we give training to how to run the Alpha course. So uh, when you run a small group, if you're facilitating a small group, uh, as, as Richard said, we are trained to, uh, to ask, let people ask any questions, and when they ask a, a question that we may think is not the best question or we you know we don't say that's a stupid question or anything <laughs> like that we always we're taught to say well that's very interesting I've never thought of that right, we're, <laughs> right. We, we go through training where we learn how to be non-threatening or how to ask questions and we intentionally learn as facilitators of small groups to to direct the questions around the group instead of answer them so you don't become the authority uh, figure of the group, and it it gives them the opportunity to it develops a, um, a a a group that's effective, and letting people feel comfortable and and um, so th there's training for that. That's an important thing, and so I think Richard, you're bringing up a great point about that's these are the some of the key reasons why Alpha is working. I would say um, some of the other things are it's Christ-centered and the gospel is attractive, and so because mm -hmm. it just focuses on what's essential to Christianity. Mm -hmm. Jesus is, is you know, so uh, attractive and winsome and so much uh, mm -hmm. for people's needs. Another thing that I think is really why Alpha works is that we are again trained to pray for people. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so because there's so much prayer mobilized outside of the Alpha course, um, that prayer for people by the group facilitators, by the whole mm -hmm. team, by the whole church, that prayer makes a big difference. So those are two just obvious Christ-centered in prayer. Yes. Um, and, and Dick, I, I would add that um, another key ingredient really is the relationship of trust built between a Christian and their friend who might not be a Christian. And, 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 and that person bringing his, his or her friend. Um, the, the, the people tend to stay longer in Alpha if they are brought brought by a friend and they've learned to trust that friend and so the friend's not going to uh, trick them in any way because they've built trust over, trust over often often many many years you know uh, before they would even set foot in the door of an alpha course yes I, I would say another reason is that the uh, now Richard do you give the talks yourself or do you use no. the videos we we use the videos on the on the weekend. Um, we you we do, I do those live, or we have somebody do those okay. live, um, because we we structure that into an overnight because we found that people are scared to death to think of going away for two nights. They in our case we feel like they will only go away for one night, so we do what we we do a 24-hour retreat, but. The talks are done by DVD because we find that people can argue with Nikki where they probably wouldn't argue with a, a live person. Okay, so Nikki, another reason why I think Alpha works so well is because of the giftedness of of uh, yeah. Reverend Nikki Gumbel. He is he is formerly a barrister, um, and and he would have been trained to move the the heads and the hearts of twelve jury members, uh, you know, by his training, and then he he received the call to the ministry 
So he comes with a you know a lawyer's perspective, and and he's really effective in apologetics, and really just presents so wonderfully uh, gospel, and and just shares so many stories. So I think that yeah. people yeah. find Nikki Gumbel's um, appeal, and and um, you know in Alpha we we have a joke, you know every night uh, we uh, try to set up an atmosphere that's really attractive. We try to have the best food we can put together, and so in many ways, we're trying to make this environment very, you know, not uh, a very attractive uh, thing to look forward to on your weekly alpha night. So there's a number of elements like that I think that are important that sometimes we might overlook. And I would say um, one other thing that's more subtle is that um, that alpha started working in England, which people talk about being post-Christian and post-modern. Um, and Europe is ahead of us in that way. And so Alpha has begun to understand how do people of on the contemporary age of things think, and how do you start to reach them? Where, um, <clears throat> you know, so sometimes people talk about modernism is when people want to know the answers to questions, but in postmodernism they really want to know if you care, and they really are interested in relationships. Yeah, I, I if I could interject, I would say that another reason that that God has used Alpha. Anointed, I think Alpha is that it's it allows people to be in process because it. My experience with folks that are unchurched, it takes a long time now for them to learn to trust Christians, then listen to the message, think through the message, and embrace the message of Christ. And 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 Alpha allows folks to be in that process. Uh, we, we've had folks that have gone through Alpha three times before they embrace a relationship with Christ. And we just keep saying, hey, listen, if you keep having questions, come back. Just keep coming back. And, and so I think it allows um, people to not just be in or out. We, we've we've made a big deal about uh, kind of clarifying various places you can be in the journey and say the important thing is to continue towards God and and so allowing people each week to build relationships with the people at their table when they have dinner uh, and and be be in that relational process belong before believe and come to faith in, in, in a process way and we've had some people finish the course and tell me they didn't agree with anything Nikki Gumbel said and of course I would laugh and say well that's fine uh, but I'm just curious why would you come back and the answer is because I like all these people at my table and I do think the relational development of, of that happens around those tables is very very important and and again that's that's where we provide the training well I'm, I'm uh, one thing Alpha is always uh, really strict about is that we begin and end on time and we have an ending time and we've promised to have some questions and answers but we want to just go to the slide about if you want to run alpha um, how do you get started um, and so I'm going to just go through this quickly and then let you ask some questions so um, on, at the website the Alpha USA website you'll find all kinds of information on alpha the specialties relationship central so get informed first of all to really know what it's all about there's so much there to help you another thing is that I know Richard has done this uh, is welcome people to come and visit their their mm -hmm. course and so if there's a nearby course or you know buddy, somebody who's run Alpha uh, or <clears throat> we have what we call Alpha advisors people who are experienced running Alpha who are willing to share it with others so uh, visit or connect with someone who is experienced with Alpha we are having a one-day training on June 7th. We do this about every six months, and we have uh, anywhere from 25 to 50 people. So we have 25 people signed up for our June 7th training, and we Great. can take more uh, up to you know 30 or 40 people. So if you come to, with three to six leaders from your church, you will hear all about every aspect of Alpha at a one-day training. There is something here. Let me see where did I put it. Um, there's this. Uh, how to run the Alpha course, the director's handbook I have here. There, if you could just see on my picture there, and um, so that is it has everything you need to know in that in that handbook. You get that from Alpha USA website, and then um, there is three training talks that your whole team goes through. It's about how to lead the small groups, how to pray with people, how to establish an environment. So that Alpha leaders training video 
for your whole team. And then just most of all, just praying and asking the Lord for guidance the whole way. These are just some things. I don't know if you'd add anything, Richard, before we take some questions. No, I think you, I think you uh, did that well. Okay. Um, I guess I would encourage people to come to that training because I think that is how you you really empower a team of people and get them excited. You you really need a team to do this. It's not something that one person can pull off because you you the key role is a facilitator at the table to help. Uh, the, one key role is the MC who helps put people at ease and establishes a non-judgmental zone in my opinion and then the others the facilitators so bringing a team is a great idea to the June 7th training. And that's going to be in uh, just outside Manchester, New Hampshire. Our, our Alpha New England team of uh, we usually have five people as speakers and small group leaders. We allow you to experience an actual Alpha during our lunch time of that training. We have a time where we actually do prayer ministry where we teach you how to pray with people and we have a number of talks that cover every aspect of the Alpha training. So we'd love to have you join us uh, and I believe we have more information on that. I have the flyer for that. But um, so come to that. I'm sorry, I'm getting this thing. Am I, I don't know if you're hearing that. Um, no. Okay, good. I get this thing flashing on my screen. So um, another very common question is how much does it cost? And I tell people that uh, for all the resources you need, and, and um, there's there's a small group facilitators manual, there's the the small group manual, um, everything that you need costs less than five hundred dollars. It's one hundred and eighty dollars for the videos. Uh, there's a lead, those leaders uh, videos that I told you about are forty dollars. Um, so um, so all of those things uh, together for a course that of varying size would be less than five hundred dollars and your only other cost would be for any advertising you do and the meals and um, so I know that's a common question too but let's Ryan do we have some people asking questions uh, because we want to uh, hear from them sure uh, Dick the one question that came in uh, so far was where was the one day training going to be located okay and I think we answered that in Manchester and you can register for that at the uh, um, uh, through the Alpha. Uh, actually, you can get information directly on the Vision New England site. We, ha we have that rolling on our homepage as well if you wanted to um, get registered and see that. But uh, And then we have another question here that says, um, how have you had any success in advertising Alpha or promoting it with publicity releases? Dr. Bard has asked that question. Uh, so uh, maybe... Um, you could speak to have publicity releases helped at all with people signing up for the alpha courses. Do you want to take that, Richard? Yeah, yes. Uh, we have done press releases. Um, we ventured one time into the movie theaters and did um, a, you know, a slide that comes up before the movies. You know, if you could ask God one question, what would and no, you wouldn't get struck by lightning. What would you ask him? And um, we we had people that came because of that. Um, but we've decided that the best way to advertise is word of mouth and people bringing their friends. And so we put like 90% of our energy into creating uh, an invitation card that we give to everybody that comes in on a particular Sunday. We tell uh, we have someone who came to faith that gives a faith story that morning and then we just make a big plug to say take a risk and invite a friend to come one night with you just one night and uh, that's really the we have found the best publicity is the, re, the built-in relationship one uh, and I would just uh, agree 100 percent that we we find that publicity might increase the people's awareness about Alpha and that did for me. I, I started hearing about it and I said, well that sounds very interesting. I'd be interested in that. But until someone called me and said, hey, they're going to do a conference in Gordon College. Why don't you come? You know, I'd like to come and tell you about it. The personal invitation by far is what really works and so uh, um, publicity is fine but the personal invitation is for yeah, sure what I, works. I, yeah, I think the main publicity that needs to be done is within your church, within the church, so that people begin to understand, oh, okay, 
oh, this is because I have people that come up to me and say, oh, I've been wanting this person to come to Alpha for five years, and they're finally coming. So I think over time that begins to happen to be known as a place to, to invite folks. Excellent. Well, guys, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Dick, we have your information up on the screen right there for people that might want to ask a question to give you a call. Um, I know for me, this has been great. And I and I hope for our um, uh, audience and for those who are going to listen, they got a really great overview of Alpha. Thank you guys for taking uh, your time to be with us. And please don't hesitate to reach out to um, Dick there via phone or email. And you can also email us at info at visionnewengland.org. And we'd be uh, really happy to help connect you with and help even find a church that's close to you doing Alpha mm -hmm. if you want to visit uh, a church that's close by to check it out. And so uh, kind of before we close in prayer, real quick, a couple of things that are happening here with Vision New England we want you to be aware of and spread the word is we have a free workshop coming up on May 30th. And it's being held at Trinitarian Congregational Church about building an intentional evangelism system. Um, I, we believe that environments and tools like Alpha are a great part of an entire uh, really well thought through system for your church to think about evangelism and outreach into your community. And so we're going to do a one day workshop on how do you build a whole system, a very you know purposeful, intentional system around this idea of being outreach oriented. And uh, it's going to be a great time. It's absolutely free, 930 to 3. Love for you to join us. Our webinar next month is uh, we have our guest, Jonathan Frizz, who's the founder of the 10 Days Initiative, uh, which is a, a right. great initiative in the fall every year that unifies and unites uh, the churches in the region. And so make sure to tune in and check that out. It's It really is how you can connect your local church with the regional church in the fall. And it's it really is, is fantastic. Jonathan is a wonderful, wonderful young man. You're going to really enjoy that. So um, you can sign up for that uh, on our website. We'll be sending out notifications as well. And, uh, and as always, thank you for your generosity in supporting Vision New England. You can support us right on our website. Our fiscal year is coming to an end, so any donation uh, helps us keep these webinars going and our seminars to be able to be free like the Intentional Evangelism one. And so take a second as, the, as our year end is coming uh, here soon at June 30th and go on to our website and, and make a gift and help us continue to help unite the church and equip and resource church leaders. That'd be great. And uh, finally, you know, check us out on Facebook to see what's happening new and coming up. So thank you so much for coming out and be with us today. Before we head out, I just wanted to close us in prayer again. Thank you, Dick and Richard, for being with us today. Mm -hmm. Well, let's pray. Yeah. Father, we thank mm -hmm. you so very much for this incredible resource that you have given to us. We thank you for the vision uh, from Reverend Gumbel. We thank you for the ministry of Alpha New England. We thank you, God, for the example in Grace Chapel and their willingness to um, just share their wisdom and their experience over the last 13 years doing this. We thank you for the lives that are being touched through the relationships, through the information. And so, God, I pray for those who are on the webinar, for those who are going to listen at some other time, that uh, we, God, would be challenged and encouraged to ask you, Lord, is this something that we can do in our home? Is this something we can do in our church to reach people with your hope, to see lives change? We thank you for it. God, we ask that you would touch our region. We ask that you would pour out your spirit in a special way, that you would do a great work, that you would encourage our church leaders, our pastors, that you would encourage our church members, God, to share the hope that we have found in you with our world around us. And so we thank you for the good things that you're doing and the great things that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, amen. everybody, for joining in. Amen. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Richard. Welcome. And uh, we will uh, talk to everybody next week, next month, excuse me. Bye. Bye. <laughs>